All right, guys, so funny about the PW Pro, as you can see, Paul and the team are literally the nicest people you'll ever meet, the finest PPF installers anywhere in the UK. Um, I'm going to obviously try and capture as much of the process as I can, where I can, of course, I don't want to impede any work, and um, because obviously I don't want to disturb anyone working on the new 911. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you inside. There's a lovely dock in there as well. Um, let's see if my bet was correct and if Paul is truly wearing shorts in two degree weather. Let's go. All right guys, so I'm on the top level of PW Pro, where you can see around me, before I take you downstairs and show you the cool stuff, is, as you can see here, the advantage that Paul has over, you know, most of the PPF installers is he doesn't buy either pre-cut kind of pieces which can get damaged in transit or a big roll of film to where he takes a blade to the car. What this is, this is a, a, a PPF cutter. So basically he will go onto the computer, he will enter in a pattern type. So in my case, uh, 911, 992 GTS with an aero pack. And this all gets kind of printed and cut in house. So obviously the pieces will come and they actually line up perfectly. Means no blades, a lot easier installation. And of course you can um, modify the kind of film pattern. So Paul um, was showing us as obviously kind of you've seen already, but there was a piece that wasn't gonna sit correctly. It was gonna go just to the edge. So what he did manually is he extended that piece so where it was gonna go past the tip and kind of uh, wrap around. So this is the PPF cutter. Um, it's, it's huge, um, probably highly expensive as well, but it looks quite cool. So as you can see, you know, on here, hopefully the camera is picking that up well, but that is basically my layout for the front bumper area of the 992 GTS. Obviously it also has the sports design kit, so it's kind of slightly different kind of certain different areas compared to a standard kind of 992 Carrera or Carrera S unless you just, um, opt in for the sports package but GTS comes standard so obviously the grill parts are slightly different so basically you could see all these little kind of cutouts he presses print it goes directly onto the printer it pre-cuts everything for you and we lay it onto the car so is this the this is the pre-cut template for the Is that the two L things? So if you look... Oh, no, go on. This here, so basically like that part there. So can you see that? Yep, yep. That notch. Well, that, that earlier on went down and straight across. That bit where it goes up is the bit that I've added to tuck in. So now it'll kind of follow the top of the bumper. It'll go around the little semicircle and then it'll dip in. So can you see where it goes up to like a point? Yep. And then there's like a tab sticking out. Yep. Like uh, the, the original shape, this curve here, was back here. So I've added that, that strip on. Yep. So, so I've got a bit to wrap around the return of the bumper. Come on. Come on. Say again. One second, I'm trying to film your gorgeous dog. Right. So I've done the lower part of the top of the uh, Sorry, the, yeah, the, the kind of the, the, the upper section, which ends up at the lower part. Uh, and there's just this top section just to kind of take the excess off. Okay. So I don't know if you want to get that. Just it. It's live, microphone. Yeah. By the way, Paul, I didn't tell you this last weekend, but I hedged a bet on camera. Oh, on. I said, is Paul going to be wearing shorts? Always. Oh. <laughs> so basically, that's that lot. Right. So this is, the, this is the excess material. So as you remove this, you then expose the pattern. Ah. So now, what you were looking at on the computer lot, 
So that's the point that you were looking at. That correlates with that. So basically it's going to come around here, follow that shape and then dip in. If you did it on the inside of the curve, there's a lot more chance of it kind of popping out of the corner. So realistically, I don't know where you've been. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah, so everything, so the stuff that I was showing you on the computer upstairs to try and kind of, kind of make this so, you know, you see as little of it as possible, is, is kind of like all those little additions. So <coughs> on an area where you've got two panels together, you can't really tuck that in because there's nowhere to put it. So that just follows the edge. So that's right on that edge. It's extended here, so it tucks into there. It follows that edge there because there's nowhere to kind of put it on the other side. And then once it gets to about here, it then tucks under, and I've extended it also. it goes underneath that window rubber. <coughs> it then follows all the way up here underneath the rubber, pops back out, follows that edge, comes round to about here, and then goes back underneath the rubber again. So all of that edge is, is kind of as out the way as it can be. And then all down here, so this is all extended, so it goes like inside here. So if you get any more sort of like catch the heels going in and out. Nice. But the front of your door is extended, so that's tucked in. The back of your door is extended, so that's tucked in. The top of the wing is extended to go under the bonnet, but it's also extended to tuck into the door, and it's also extended to cover the wing where you are. So the front's been, the, the bumper's been done? Bonnet. Have the bonnet. Yeah. So if you look at that, this is all tucked in everywhere. The only two places it comes out are right on these corners. So it pops out, goes round the corner and then goes under. The reason it has to do that is when it's on the kind of the outside of a radius, it just creates excess. Yeah. So it just ain't like a baggy bastard. That, that, that's it, comes there. So, so that's it. that pops out there and it pops out on the very tip of that point there. Okay. And everything else, it just comes kind of just away from that just a little bit and then goes underneath. So all of that's tucked in. So that, the bonnet's all tucked in, the wings. This here, so I've extended this, so this should follow kind of the extremity. Yeah. So what I've done is I've extended this, so that actually tucks in, so there's no edge there. You had to show me all the bloody hell. Had to show me all the bloody stuff when I didn't get the camera on it. No, it's all good. It's cool, isn't it? So yeah, so we're trapping on now, we're doing well now. Like I say, we're trapping mental yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Leave me to it. Can't see it's what, sorry? You can't see it. No, 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 it's, it's thing, interesting. It's like, like this light is, is my worst nightmare, if you like. So obviously I have, I have it lit as it's lit, so it shows up the imperfections. Mm, mm. So when you see your car in here, this is- The this worst. Is, this is the time where if anything is going to show, it's going to show. Things that you wouldn't even see in normal daylight right, get yeah, picked yeah. out by all of this, yeah. So, I mean, you think this is, what, 750 watts or LED above your head? Yeah, the warehouse. We have a few of them in our packing warehouse. Yeah, I can't even look at them. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's... <laughs> so, yeah, so, so we're going really well now. I'm really pleased now. How's the paint condition? Are you happy with yeah, it? Yeah? Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a little mark. I'm going to have a little play with it. Um, but yeah, like that, well, that follows that, follows that, and it goes in and out of every... Yeah, I thought how you were going to do that because of them stupid yeah. Yeah, fins. Yeah, it literally follows every single thing. But you can imagine, like, this has, like, a massive challenge, you because know, it's such a weird shape. See, I'm surprised you're doing that, or is it self-healing? What, rubbing it? Yeah. Yeah. My brush, mate, we can wreck this and then repair it. You're mad. Yeah. But yeah, this will all get wiped down and clean. What I won't do is detail it. So normally when I finish the car, yep. if I'm not coating it, I'll go over it with like a, you know, like a rapid, you know, like, yeah, a, like detail a detail spray. spray. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I won't do that because I don't want to affect anything that you're going to do after. Naked. So I'll just make sure it's just clean and dry. It's like the tyres. I'm trying a new um, version 3 product on something. Mm. Just leave them bare. What are we doing with the wheels? Well, if you're taking them, I've got the coating. Do you want me to coat it? I'll call them for you if you want. When are you taking them off? In, in the but, afternoon? Yeah, it'll be later on, a lot later on. And it's, uh, so like my priority is now a front bumper, back bumper and windscreen. Yep. So like if these get done, they probably won't get done today. Yeah, yeah, because this is such a shape. You've got like separate pieces kind of like for the top, the little black section. That's a separate piece on the inside of the upright, a separate piece on the outside of the upright, and then that lower piece as well. So it's, it's a all, separate <coughs> piece. Yeah. So it all kind of, comes together. The one that we are um, re, the one that we're applying is the pre-production now. Yeah. It's pre-production, so it's been. 
It gets tested on the 500 pound cars first. Would you, would you not be as well off having like, some VPF like test panels? Um, yes. However, yeah, like, I don't mean like full. You no, know, like a bonnet wrap type of thing. Oh, well, even just on like a, you know, even just on a like a, a square piece of melamine or something, you know. But like the the reason why I want to do it on this and you know like normal cars is because you know a bonnet is going to live inside here. Yeah. Like that, don't you? I can see a bubble. Do you want something? Oh, go on. Get him on camera. Ah. What's this? Say hello to all the YouTube people. Come here. Paul. Paul. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. You're a good boy. There you are. <laughs> So you think kind of where we started in, like, it was 2009 when we actually opened, and so kind of the first Monday, I think it was in May of that year. But we'd had the idea the year before, obviously, and it took time to get to the point of entry. Um, so that, I don't know, it was probably six months planning, went into it before that, you know, sold the car, you know, used the money from the car to, to do that. And I had four years in that first unit. I've never saw your first unit. No, it was about 1,200 square feet, so it was a council home, kind of, you know, very basic, quite an old unit. <clears throat> and that's where we started, you know, that's where we built it. Um, built the, the customer base, but then you had to grow it, don't you? You need more space, so that's when we went for the second one, that was 2013. And it's, like, it's like an ebb and flow, isn't it? You kind of like, you work for a bit, you get some money in the bank, and then you think, right, I want this equipment and that equipment. And then it's just like, it's just in and out, isn't it? You never, you, never, you never really kind of stop and just think, right, I'm just going to build that. Your spend never decreases with it. I can. And that obviously carried on up until last year. Well, I suppose two, it was last year when we moved in here, but it was two years before that when we committed to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so it should have been sort of, I think from the point we committed to buy it to the point where we moved in, should have been about 18 months and it ran over sort of six months, so it always does. a two-year process. Yeah, so it's, it's progression, isn't it? But hopefully now I'm at that point, to so the point that you've just said, where you kind of you get to and you're like, right, I've done it now, I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah. Not going to challenge myself to do anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to maintain it. You know, I kind of got it to the point where I want it to be. Now you get to enjoy it. Mm. That's, that's, that's from now on. That's, mm. that's from now until I retire. No more, no more projects. Expanding, just, yeah. Just, yeah, just good to work. Yeah, but the things are in this place, you know, when you think about it, like everything you're paying into it, this is the way I think. Everything, I mean, there's a pro and con to, to both anyway, you know, rent versus thing. But with this, you know, once you start acquiring the money in the bank, like you said, on the weekend, you know, if you... It's weird though, isn't it? Because like, so naturally in our heads, you know, we all own, like, our own homes. But, like, for work, it's just kind of almost accepted that, you know, that, you, that, you, that you're renting kind of thing. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's great, because then the big boys get to make the money, don't they? And just underlings stay, stay kept down. Yeah. Um, for instance, that pension companies, that pension companies love these. Tax well, you know where we used to be, you know, Flexspace? The yeah. whole company is owned by a pension fund in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly what I'm just saying, isn't it? Yeah. They're like, they love it because, yeah, the income from is tax-free because it's secure against pension. Hey, Georgia could be the manager of a team that runs the team. In 10 years' time, yeah. I, want to be, I want to be working three days a week and I want Georgia running this. But at this point, we're doing something quite unusual because normally we would be shouting at people for using like something that's on paint work, but we know it's absolutely, you know, clean. And the reason that we're doing that is because there's no chance of any fires. Under the PPF. Under the PPF. Yeah, so if you think, you know, using pots, using rags, you know, everything in, so it gets dust in it, you know, it goes through the washing machine, whatever it might be. So what we need is something that's completely incapable 
of leaving anything behind. I love learning new stuff, you know. It's nice. So what solution are you using? I've, I've always wondered. Is it so it's, yeah, so the, the tradition, so when I learned, it was always baby shampoo and water. The problem okay. with that is, is over time, uh, and you probably be able to explain why better than I can, you'd end up with kind of like growth in the water. So you'd end up uh, like almost like a black mould. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing that, that baby shampoo, whatever's in it. Enzymes. Yeah, so whatever enzymes in there can create um, a growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. You end up with it and you look at your bottle. So if you look at that bottle, I've been working with that bottle for a couple of years. Okay. And it's absolutely clean as a whistle inside. That's perfect, yeah. So it's, it's, it's um, the product's called Fusion All Type. So it's obviously completely non biological, you know, it's all chemical. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it works really, really well. The environment in the building. Are you using a uh, DI water? No. Or just doesn't normal? Like it. doesn't like it. I filled it, so I put it, I actually put it through a chef's sieve. <laughs> okay, interesting. So a very, very fine mesh chef's sieve. Yep. And that, that gets out any possible debris. But what we found was, was that when, if you, if you deionize the water and took all the mineral content out of it, it was actually more prone to kind of like sticking and grabbing. All right, guys, so we are in the nerve center now. You could see the GTS on the ramp. Most of the PPF work has already been done. Um, we've just completed the front bumper, as you've seen. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna kind of tidy up a few of the kind of final installs. I think there's all the niggly bits. We're gonna coat the wheels. Um, we're gonna leave the coating though. So the coating is gonna be done back at HQ because we're developing a new flexible coating that's all I will say um, but yeah it's starting to look super nice I want to say let me do a little prologue to this what you're seeing here is the PPF Pro in development don't laugh Georgia right so Paul has left me a very very hard piece to do the fuel cap so teach me maestro yeah. <laughs> so you want it to be clean so we're gonna start off by cleaning so if you just use the the pressurized water all right and just give the area a waft down. So clean the part you're going to clean and the bit around it. Is that enough? Yeah, just a little waft. Yeah. And then you need this boy. Okay. Just give that a wipe round over the area, not just the panel, over the area around it as well. I'm a wiping snob, so I'm going to try and do it because I've just corrected this. I don't want any problems, right? Is that enough or yeah, more? Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. And then what you want to do is you want to waft it again, so more water, more pressurised water. That's getting in as well. That'll do. And then get your squeezy blade. Yeah. Dip it in the water so it hasn't got any little bits on it. And then start from the top and just give it a couple of strokes. So left to right, up and down. Left to right, start at the top and then work your way down. So obviously everything that you straight is going to head south. Gravity is your friend. Yeah. Right, okay. This feels so wrong. Great. Yeah. Right, and then this is your slip solution. So this is the one that's going to make it move. So I'll get you quite a nice fine pattern. That there, you don't need to drown it. Okay, okay. You're going to hook that over your pocket. Yep, 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 so easy. Ready to go. Yep. Both hands in there. So you're going, to, you're going to give them a little wash and you're going to leave them soaking wet through. Right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're going to come over here. I'm just showing. Pick up the edge. Oh dear. With your wet hand. You're going to keep it that way around. So I'll hold that for you. So if you just get hold of that edge, I can't do it because my hands are dry. 
Right, that's it. As you peel it off, squirt it with your squirter. That'll help. Yeah. That's it. Peel it off, squirt, squirt, squirt. Keep going. Let it just kind of fall down. That's it. So you know that this edge was the top edge. Yep. So go over to the car, put your pump spray down. Do I need to do more? Keep your hand in. More hands. And then if you remember, that was the top edge. This is so the top edge, yeah. Turn it back around, turn it back around. So that's the top edge. So oh, that's you, the top yeah, edge, so you okay. Really, what, what you want to do is kind of like swap it over in your hands. That's it. Dip that hand again while you've got the opportunity to. And then line it up. So now what you've got to do is you've got to line it up. We'll give you a little bit of juice so you squeeze the fly. This is your squeegee. Do I need to so wet now that? Now, what you've got to do, you've got to keep that in the correct place. You've got to get that alignment and then you've got to squeegee it out. So, it's going to be somewhere there. So, what you want to do is. Do I hold like, like you? A, so, it should be starting to hold a tiny little bit. So, what you want to do. Um, is, is just to squeeze you a little bit, try and get a fix. Sorry. <laughs> right, okay, so what you do is like, like the trick is to keep it juicy. Juicy. Never go in dry, Nicholas. <laughs> and then <laughs> just flick out your edge. What you're trying to do is trying to get a little bit to kind of tack. Right, that'll do. And then give it another little juice and then just gradually work that down. Just go in little bands. But what you need to do is to kind of keep checking this. What you don't want to do is squeeze you down and then realise that you're moving the piece. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm so, just working the edges. So, yeah, you don't want to trap anything in the middle though. So kind right. of work your way down in little bands, little kind of stabby bands. I've lost That's alignment. Right. No, it's okay. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can hold that up a little bit yeah. while you do it. Now, we'll do a little bit of alcohol around the edge just to... That's what I could up. smell. I thought I could smell alcohol somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's a blend of 99% IPA. So, and then just go over it again. So just kind of like do a scrape from like there to there, scrape from there to there, a few nice scrapes down. And I can put pressure behind this. Yeah. I'm just hoping there's like well, at least one little bit of shit in it that'll piss you off every time you put petrol in your car. Look at that. Now that is how you start a PPF business. He's out of business yeah, now. That's it. Is that yeah. actually alright? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's all, that is, that's it. I PPF yeah, my own car. It. I know yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Fine job, Tim. Well, please go and double check. Can you, can you imagine what it's like to do that oh, for the first time? That is awful. I mean, you know that with alignment. But you think, you think that, that well, you, you imagine the size of the piece. So this is the size of the piece. So that was on the same piece as that. So you've got to ma manage that yeah. onto there with perfect alignment. I, uh, um, with perfect alignment. No dirt, no dry spots, Yeah. perfect alignment, yeah. nothing left in it, that's the, that's the challenge. Well tell me, just you need to check this now Paul, because you know, if I've messed it up. If it looks crap when it's dry out, I'll change it. Can you, remember, right. Right. can you remember what I told you over text message? We are the father and son of the detailing oh, industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right guys, so you've seen me PPF a little bit, you've seen me do as much B-roll, you know, and kind of education as I can. You know, Paul is a raw character, but he's just the man. He's amazing. He's got the perfect assistant. Georgia is learning from the best. Um, so I can now start my own PPF business. Done. I'm going to start moving up in the world. <laughs> um, basically, we're going to finish up the car kind of off camera and stuff. We're going to take off the center locks of the wheels. We're going to quickly, obviously, re-clean them again because the They've been in and out a few times. Um, we're going to put our development coating on. I won't tell you exactly what the spec is. I'm not going to talk about it just yet. But basically, wheels off. 
coating. I've got it here just over there on that table. Coat the wheels. We're going to come back to you on episode three to where you will see this car in a different location again, back with us at HQ. And we're going to give it a very light maintenance clean because again it is clean but it, it will be driven from here to HQ and we're going to then move on to a whole new world of technology and development pre-production products I hope you've enjoyed this guys I am honestly if you could see my hands there my hands were shaking I'm super pumped honestly it's just amazing living the dream life looking well hope you've enjoyed the episode as always guys I love you all so much and I will see you all very soon thank you